Are you in need of a patio makeover for a new look? How about a rough sawn timber pergola? Hey everybody, I'm Justin at Remodelaholic. Today I'm going to show you how to build a timber pergola over an existing concrete patio. I built this for a client that wanted to improve their backyard patio to have a nicer space for family gatherings. They wanted a pergola design to match the same design that is at his sister's house. I went over there and took measurements to get an idea of how to build it and to fit it into their existing patio and yard. I have plans for this design in our shop. There's a link in the description below. Because this was bigger than 200 square feet, I needed to submit construction drawings to the city to get approved to build it. About a week later after approval, I was able to start construction. Before I forget, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great DIY projects from Remodelaholic. I started with laying out the center point of the post on the existing concrete patio. I designed this pergola to stand separate from the existing patio. The client will possibly be replacing the concrete patio in the future. I designed the location of the pergola to stand just off the edge of this existing flowering tree that blooms so beautifully in the spring. I also had to adjust the design of the back to have a post in the center to not block the window from the house, and that made it not symmetrical like the front. The plans in the shop will be a symmetrical design. I started by laying out the center points of the pergola post using the back corner of the house as a reference line to keep everything square. I used the three, four, five rule to make sure that the corner post center points were in the right spot. So if you measure out three feet from the corner one way and four feet from the corner the other way, when you measure the two markings at the diagonal, the distance will be five feet. Because of the size of the timbers and the pergola, the city required that I installed the pergola on top of new footings. I wanted a clean cut in the concrete for the footings, so I called up my friend Sam. We used a concrete core drill to cut 10 inch holes through the concrete for the footing holes. This concrete core drill made it really nice, just as I planned. It took about a half day to get these cut out and the concrete removed from them in preparation for digging. It was so worth the money to have that done. There were some temporary holes we had to make in the concrete to hold the drill steady. I will be patching that later on in the video. Oh, nice and clean. I had to remove some of the concrete with a hammer drill, drilling it into pieces and then pulling it out in chunks. I was lucky enough to have a few pieces come out in one piece using a couple pointy tools to prying it out. I started digging the holes and didn't know what type of soil it was going to be. I was hoping for some nice, not so rocky soil. It ended up being really easy to dig and took about a half an hour per hole to dig an eight to nine inch wide hole to the right depth of 34 inches from the top of the patio. The bottom of the footing needed to be 30 inches deep into the soil for the frost depth requirement in this area. The city also required there be at least one number four rebar, 28 inches in length to be centered in the footing, three inches above the ground. So we needed to suspend the rebar in the center of the footing like this in order to meet that requirement. Now it's time to pour the concrete footings I ended up hiring a neighbor to help me with this and it made things go a lot faster. I used a piece of old plywood on the patio to help protect it from spills while we were working. We ended up using about two and a half bags of 80 pound concrete per hole, mixing it with a shovel by hand in the wheelbarrow. It took me about 30 minutes per hole with a helper. Once we got enough in the hole to the top of the patio, I used a small trowel to level it off and smooth it out. I decided to use the Simpson Strong Tie Concealed Post Base. This is going to fit perfectly under the cedar post. I thought that this would give me more control over the final location of the post base rather than placing a bracket in the wet concrete while the footing was curing. Let me know in the comments below 
if you have any other recommendations for a better post base scenario for this situation. The thing that I like about this base is that it elevates it off the ground an inch from the concrete and above the two bolts that hold it to the footing, keeping it from wicking up moisture. To install these, I found it best to first mark out where the brackets will be anchored down and have them leveled and ready. I oriented them all the same direction with the fin perpendicular to the house. This was going to make it easier to level the post in one direction. I waited a few days for the footings to cure. Then I drilled with a hammer drill two half inch holes six inches deep on top of each footing. Then I cleaned out the hole with a wire pipe cleaner I attached to my drill and an air compressor. You want to clean it out with the hole as best as you can before the next step. Next, I filled the hole halfway with a two-part epoxy. Once you open the epoxy, it gets mixed, so you need to use it. I wasn't quite ready and didn't have a powerful enough drill for the bolts, so I wasted a whole tube of epoxy and an hour trying to borrow the right tools. Then you need to drill in the six inch bolts and make sure that the bracket is level. There was one hole on the bracket that I had to make wider in order for the bracket to sit square with the house. It was nice to have a little bit of wiggle room in case your holes are not drilled in the perfect spot. Before the beams were installed, I stained them all with two coats of Woodscape's exterior wood stain by Sherwin Williams in the color of spice wood. Next, I started staining all the posts. Once the stain was dried, I started installing the posts on the post bases. I used some temporary wood scraps to hold the posts upright and level. I had pre-marked the edge of the bracket with lines of the hole openings to be able to see where the holes need to be drilled. I tried to get the brackets as level as possible, but I still needed to fine tune the location of the holes once the posts were upright. That is why I drilled the holes after they were standing up. I had to do this this way because of the various slopes of the patio I was trying to match. I used a long 5 8 inch spade bit to drill out the holes and only drilled through 3 quarters of the wood base to set the pins in. There are three pins that I hammered into the base to anchor the post to the footing. Once those were in place I was able to put plastic shims under the post to keep it level. I measured the post length, then I cut off the extra with the chainsaw. From the first post, I used a string and a bubble level to mark the rest of the post level height. Then I cut out a five inch deep notch, a bit wider than the beam with the chainsaw. Then I stained all the notches before the beams were installed. I cut the ends of the beams with a simple 45 degree cut halfway down the end of the beam. After cutting all the ends, I stained the boards before I put them up. It was so much easier to stain the boards before they were installed. After the stain was dried, I was able to place the beams on top of the post. I installed the two side beams and then the long beams on top of those. Once the beams were square to the post, I attached the beams with two five inch timber screws on both sides of all the posts. Before I could install the rafters, I needed to make the diagonal bracket. I cut all the brackets out from a four x 10 beam. I needed to make eight brackets for this pergola. I will have a link in the description below to the plans with all the dimensions. I was able to clamp a block of wood at the bottom of the bracket to the post to hold the bracket while screwing it in place. I pre-drilled a half inch wide countersunk hole, then drilled in two 10 inch long lag screws on top and two on the bottom, drilling them at a slight angle into the beam or the post. For the rafters, I cut the ends exactly like the beams with a simple diagonal cut at each end. For the layout of the rafters, I offset the first one three and a half inches from the end of the beam on each side of the pergola, measured to the center of the pergola and divided up the spaces equally. I ended up setting up a string along the front of the pergola for each end of the rafters to have a reference line to keep them straight since I cut them all to length prior to installing them. 
Then I attached each rafter to the top of the beam with a three and a half inch deck screw at an angle into the beam. The next step, I installed the pre-stained runners along the top of the rafters. These were installed perpendicular to the rafters and spaced equally, similar to the process of spacing out the rafters. I started with attaching one at the front and one on the back then I calculated the distance between the boards to keep them equal. I screwed down the boards with deck screws. I ended up not having to cut those to length, which was nice. The ends of the boards landed on top of the center of a rafter. From below, you couldn't see the seams of the shade runners above. After that first side was installed, I added the other side of the shorter boards and cut them all to length once they were screwed down. Then I came back and stained the end of the runners where they were cut off. Now that the top of the pergola was completed, I started working underneath again. I removed all the bracing and patched all the holes. So these are the holes, temporary holes, where I had brackets um, holding this up level. I'm just gonna take some wood filler Fill it in real quick before I do my final touch up with the stain. So I'm just rubbing it on like that and then pushing that in. And I'll come back when that dries and you won't see those holes anymore. I caulked the cracks in the post and touched up the stain around the pergola. At first I wanted a simple look at the bottom of the post without trim, but thought it would be too much work to patch all the slits and the holes to make it look good and seamless. So I decided to use the extra pieces of cutoff from the rafters to trim out the bottom of the post. I ended up mitering all the corners and creating a way to make the bases removable in the future. So three sides are attached to each other and they slide over the base of the post. Then the other side is screwed into place into the post and two parts of the other trim. I then caulked the edges and stained over the caulk. I think it turned out really nice. What do you think so far? I'm not done yet though. You can't have an amazing pergola without lighting it up at night. I ended up installing two strands of LED lights, screwing them to the bottom of the rafters through the holes that are located by the light bulbs. I found that it was best to start in the middle of the pergola where the two strands connected, then spaced out the lights from there. I added screws in five different locations along the run of each light, and I ended up with five rows of lights. I added a 30-foot extension cord from the house to the end of the lights on the pergola. Now all they have to do is plug in the lights when they need them. The pergola is now the perfect place to hang flower baskets off the post and have flowering pots around the base. I installed two heavy-duty brackets on two of the posts for hanging baskets of colorful flowers. Because we live in a dry climate, these need to be watered often. In order to keep these beautiful without having to water them manually every day, I continued the drip irrigation from a nearby planter bed to go up the pergola, over the top, and to the other side. With the lighting in place, and flowers being watered. Now it's time to add some comfortable seating to enjoy this new space. I recommended to the owners that a propane fire table with some comfortable chairs would be great for this space. The owners ended up purchasing an outdoor sofa set from Costco that fit the space perfectly. One thing that the owners noticed was how the pergola and patio makeover has made their backyard feel even bigger and that they are out there every night using it because it's there. They absolutely love it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more DIY projects from Remodelaholic and we'll see you in the next video.